everybody, welcome to the Vita Vita art class. My name is Cami Casey, and today we are going to be creating a seahorse project. Now, it is a little bit complicated, so for today, we're going to be building more of the components for the seahorse, and then next week, we're going to be building our seahorse. We will be using watercolors, but not quite yet. So, right now, you need to have your white piece of paper, your pencil, your eraser and your black marker okay so let's get started all right everybody so you want to have your paper hot dog style remember hamburger style is sideways sideways hot dog styles is when it's up and down um and we're going to be drawing our seahorse so you're going to start out with a rather and we want it to be big too with a rather large curve and this is going to be the seahorse's belly all right, now at the bottom of the curve, we're almost gonna do like a J. Yeah, just like a J at the end. This is gonna be the little seahorse tail. Now at the bottom, this point, you need to do a line going out, and then you're gonna follow this curve all the way back up to his belly. See, and we want it to be pretty thick like this, and we're gonna bring it all the way back up, okay? So this is the back of the seahorse. Now out to the side a little bit, we're just gonna do a line. And at the bottom of this line, to this point, you're just gonna connect it. And that's gonna be his little um, seahorse mouth. Now from the top of this line, we're gonna curve it up. See, it's like a little beak. I don't even know what that's called. And now from this point to this point, we wanna make a big curve. This is gonna be where all of his spikes are. Let's see, whoa, helmet head. <laughs> okay, there we go. See, I messed up a little bit, not a biggie. Just take your eraser. Go back, perfect. Now at the top of this where the curve is, you're gonna follow it around and do little loops like a U. And this is gonna create his little seahorse head that has like little spiky scales kind of. And you're gonna follow it all the way back down. Now with your eraser, you're gonna erase any of that excess, like that outside circle you made, you wanna erase that. Cause that was just a guide for when we make our spikes. Okay? And that's a seahorse. So, so simple. Um, our next step, you know what that is, you take your black marker and you're going to outline the seahorse, but you guys know how to do that, so I already finished one, and here is my outlined seahorse, and that, there, this is the first part of the project, so simple, so easy. Now you want to take this seahorse and put it somewhere safe, maybe on the refrigerator, um, maybe put it on a shelf in your room, or you can ask a caregiver or a parent to hold on to it for you because we are gonna need this next week. But for right now, we're all done with this piece of paper, okay? All right, great job on the seahorse drawing. Now we're gonna move on to the background, and this is the fun part. You are gonna need your water, so I have a little cup of water. I have my paintbrush, and most importantly, I have my watercolors. So, let's get started. Okay, so I have my paper hamburger style right now, but it doesn't matter. You can have your paper however you want. We're gonna be using the blue watercolor, and the first thing you wanna start with is get your paintbrush, and I'm gonna dip it in my water. So I'm gonna dip it in my water, and then I'm gonna put some of that water into my blue little paint bucket okay and you come over to the page oh perfect you just squiggle it on the page but do you see how it's nice and rich nice and dark that's what we want so you're gonna get some more paint load it up and go in a different area like this we are making the background to our seahorse you really don't need a ton of water. You just want it to kind of be gooey in the little um, palette. But then when you come over here, we don't need a ton of water. So I'm gonna do probably like five little blue splotches. So I have three so far. I'm gonna do one down here, kind of coming off the paper. Oh, I like the way that looks. 
and then I sometimes add a little bit more water but you don't need a ton because remember we want the color right now to be really dark I think I might do some up here yeah see how it's really dark and rich now the great thing about watercolor it gives you a really cool technique like this if you do it right and that's what we want to do we want to get something like this we don't want our paper to look just solid blue that's not what we're going for so once you get all your splotches now dip your paintbrush really load it up with water this time so I have a lot of water on here and I'm gonna go over where I was painting and spread it out see how I I'm gonna get some more water and I spread it out So you don't need to dip your paintbrush in the blue anymore. You just want to spread out what you already have on your page. And just keep get going back for more water. I put a plastic thing on my table because it gets pretty messy. But you just, I mean, you cannot mess up watercolor. You just add water. It's so simple. Pretty fun. Okay, so I think mm, I want to add some more blue. So now I am going to put some water on my paintbrush. Go back, and I think I'm going to add some right around here. Ooh, that, yeah. Get more water and spread it around. Because you want it to look kind of almost like blotchy. You don't want it to look all exactly pearly, pretty blue. Because a seahorse lives in water, and water isn't, you know, it's not just, there's so many different blues, especially because the sun hitting it. Okay, let's see. All right, I need to get more blue, so I'm going to get, and my, my blue is getting a little dry, so I'm just going to add a drop of water in there. Ooh, I like the way that looks. So some of it leave it thick, like in uh, the deep blue, and then some of it, see, because my table is slanted, some of it's dripping down, but I like the way it looks. I think it gives it a really cool effect, actually, so works out. I'm not worried. All right, and then just keep adding. And if you have a little bit of white, that's fine. That's totally fine. This is just, I mean, you're just, mm, I want a little more blue, I think, over here. See, so I add the blue, just go back, and I'm going to pull it, oh, I'm going to pull it up and see what happens. Oh, that looks cool. Um, I like it. All right, take your time. Don't worry if it's not looking exactly how you want it to. I'm, I'm sure it looks great. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more blue oh, right there. Let's see. I'm just going to kind of swatch it around, and then I'm going to go over what I just put with water. Excellent. Excellent, excellent. I'm happy with it. Whoa. All right. And you guys, that's your background. This is, so you, this is your background. Look at, look at how this one I did earlier. It turned out pretty cool, and I even like this one better. So what you want to do now is you're going to put this aside so it can dry and we have one more step for today because again, you're not really going to have a finished product to put on the website today because this is a two part project um, and we're just doing like the main components of it and we're going to build next week. So just let this dry and get ready for the next part. Okay. Okay. So you finished your seahorse. We finished the background and now is the last part. We're gonna be making um, some colorful squares that we're gonna use next week. So what you will need, your watercolors, your watercolor paintbrush, scissors this time, and I have a couple bowls of little water because we're gonna be using multiple colors and if you combine yellow with like maybe red, it kind of tints the color. So have maybe two or three cups of water available. All right, let's get started. Okay, so now we're using our third piece of white paper. What I want you to do is you're gonna have it hamburger style and you're gonna fold it 
to this side. It's okay if it's not perfect. Try to line up the edges. Okay, and I'm going to crease this. And then from the bottom, you're going to fold it up and then crease that edge. And now when I open it up, I have four squares. Now with your scissors, you're going to cut along the lines that you made. Now this is really difficult sometimes. So if you need somebody to maybe draw a line for you with a highlighter, you can do that. Um, or have somebody help you cut, you can do that too. So when you're all done, you're going to end up with four squares. So there's two of my squares. And there's the other two. All right, so what we're gonna do with these squares is each of these squares is gonna end up being a different color using our watercolor. So see above here, I combined green and like a darker green. For this, I did purple and a fuchsia. I did pink and red and I did yellow with orange. So um, we might do some of these same ones. We might mix it up. I'm not sure. We're gonna see how we're feeling today. So. I'm going to start with the green. So get some water on your paintbrush and put a little bit of the water in the, the little palette container of the green so it's nice and thick. And we're going to start with that. Remember, does not have to be perfect. Okay, so then I'm going to go back to get some more green. And like we did with the sky, I'm going to put it maybe in a different area like this. Now with I'm going to re-dunk my paintbrush, and now I'm going for the dark green. If you don't have dark green, if you only have one green, just keep doing just keep doing that color green. But if you have another color, or maybe you have want to combine green and blue, that works too. So we're just adding really, really dark and vibrant little sections to our square. Okay, and I know that these are tinier, um, so if you can't see that good, just remember we're doing exactly what we did with the ocean. Now, I'm just getting water on my paintbrush. There's no color, and I'm going to take, see, I pull out some of that color, and I move it around. So I'm just, I'm not, I don't have any color on my paintbrush right now. I'm just moving around the color that's already on there. If you go too fast, it starts to create these bubbles, which are not the cutest. Well, maybe they are, because you know what? It's under the sea. Let's see. I think I want to add a little bit more of the green to this one. Ooh, yeah. See, and see how this part is darker and this part's lighter? Cool. I like the vibe. Okay, and then I just kind of push the water around different places. We want to try to get these all full of color, but, um, ooh, I like that. Yeah, that looks good. All right, cool. I'm going to actually tilt mine a little bit the other way because my table's at a slant, so it might give it a cool technique. See how all the water is running down? I like that. Get my tissue. All right, so that's one square. We're going to put it aside. Now we're going to do two other colors, a different color combination. Let's try for this purple and fuchsia one. So let's go for the dark purple. You're going to get some. I'm going to a new water bowl. I'm going to get some water into my, where is it? Okay, here. This is like my fuchsia water bowl. If you don't have fuchsia, use red or purple, whatever works. And look it. So if I start to put my brush out and it gets lighter, then go and get more color and put it in a different section. We don't want it to be too close to each other. Okay, so there's that. I'm going to get a little bit more. I put a little bit of water on my brush and then I went for the color on my palette. Ooh, I like that. Okay, and now I'm going to go for, I think I'm going to try my lighter purple actually. Now, if you don't have a light purple and you just have one purple, like I said, you could try red, you could even try orange. See, and I'm moving the color over. I'm gonna make another little splotch here, maybe. 
and then maybe another little splotch here. Kind of a similar color. All right, now I'm just getting a lot of water on my paintbrush and I'm gonna start moving around this color that we have. These are really similar colors. Yeah, I think I need to get some of my dark purple going. All right, I decided to do dark purple now, you guys. So there we go, there. Cause it's nice, it's cool to combine the two colors. Okay, so I'm gonna get my dark purple again, maybe put it over here. All right, and now with the, with the water, I'm gonna move everything around. See, so even over here, look, it's all white. I'm just gonna grab some of this stuff and put it over here, perfect. Grab some of this, just move your brush around. There's a lot of probably, there. it might get messy. Don't worry, it's water. It's watercolor, and if you have the Crayola or washable ones, it'll come right out. Sometimes it's good to get a little messy. Let's see, I think I want one more splotch up here. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and there's our purple one. I think I'm gonna do the same thing with this because my table is tilted. Oh, I guess it's okay. Because my table is tilted, it tends to bring all the water down, but no problem. All right, now this one. I tried to do red and pink, didn't really turn out that great, like that different. I'm gonna go to my new watercolor, my water bowl. I'm putting some water into my red, swooshing it around a little bit. Swooshing is a very technical term. And ooh, that's so nice. See, I want to keep it nice and dark and let it just sit there for a minute. I'm going to do the same thing maybe over here. Just let it sit and get that color stuck on the page. Maybe one more right here. Okay, and now going back, what's the other color that we want to combine? Honey, what do you think? Tim is recording. Let's see what he says. What color do you want us to combine with the red? Uh, let's say green. Oh, no. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, okay. That's what I get for asking. Okay, so he wants to combine green. Let's see. I'm going to do my darker green. Christmas colors. Okay, so I'm keeping it away from my red. Okay. I'm keeping it away. All right, and now I'm going to drag the colors out. Now, green and red, when they combine, they actually make brown. <laughs> so, we will see how this turns out. So, I'm barely touching the green as I'm pulling out the red. Kind of trying to move the water around. Let's see if we can move some of this green out. All right, and you know what? And if it gets a little messy, I'm gonna show you how to solve that problem. Just in case you guys do do two colors um, that kind of get a little brown, I'm gonna show you how to fix that. Okay, so. All right, now I'm gonna get the red and do more thick drops of it throughout and it'll help keep that color. And then just let it run or let it sit just how it is, okay? All right, and now for our last one, let's see, I'm gonna do, I like to do similar colors because see, sometimes this will happen if you do two colors that are not very close together. That's okay though. Let's do a one with yellow. Okay, so I'm gonna get my yellow. Remember, just put a little bit of water in your in your paint little paint palette hole. What why can I not think of what the word is for that? Little paint compartment. Okay, I'm gonna keep making some pretty like vibrant paint um, splotches just like that perfect and now I think I'll do orange so let me get my orange oh that's not the one I wanted hold on just a minute guys 
Oh, there it is. I'm going to get my orange, whatever orange. And like I said, if you just have the simple one that I think it only has eight colors. Yeah, that's perfect. Yeah, see, that's like a mustard color. Where's my orange? What happened to you, orange? Okay, there we go. There he is. He was hiding. All right. And now, so I have those splotches. Now I'm not going to add any more paint to my brush. I'm rinsing it out in the water. And I'm just going to drag out those colors that I already have. You're just going to drag them out. Let's see, I'm going to bring, there's a lot of water down there. I'm going to bring that up. Okay, now it, it might look, seem like, oh, this is not really making anything. You might not see it now, but I promise next week when all of this stuff is dried, it's all going to make sense. I promise you. Oh, I'm going to add a little bit more orange to here. I don't know why that color, it looks orange. Okay, there we go. There we go. Okay, so what you're going to want to do is let these things dry. Um, once it might take maybe until tonight, they should all be dry and then put them all aside. So you're going to have your four papers, you're going to have your sky and your seahorse. So maybe put them all in a pile in a safe spot and next week we'll have that you need to bring those plus a few other supplies and we'll finish our seahorse. Okay, but great job today and see ya.